the rugby league has uh, now banned males from competing against females in international competition. And 60 Minutes Australia did a story about this. And I want to play this story for you. And if you're only listening to the audio, uh, you're not going to be able to fully appreciate this because you got to see the video. So go to YouTube or go to dailywire.com and watch the video too. Um, this is not supposed to be a parody. They interview Hannah Mouncey, who's a male who identifies as a woman, plays rugby, is now going to be excluded from a lot of these competitions, a lot of these uh, rugby matches. And you're supposed to watch this interview and think that Hannah Mouncey is the victim and that it's absurd that he would be uh, excluded. But it's kind of hard to come to that conclusion just based on the visual. Let's watch. Do you accept the AFL's argument that you do have a size advantage over some of your opponents? I think the biggest issue is not necessarily that I'm too big or too strong now. It's more, okay, you're already big, you're already strong, whatever. But what if you were to get into that elite training environment and they were to build you up, put on an extra 15 kilos and you just push everyone aside. But physiologically, that's just not gonna happen. The people who seem to have the biggest problem with this is male administrators, but the female competitors haven't raised their voices at all. Lisa Watson knows better than most what Hannah's going through. She's a doctor who specialises in transgender health issues and is also a transgender athlete. After two years of hormone replacement therapy, she says Hannah's body has no residual benefits from her time as a male. Prior to her transitioning, she had a V8 motor powering this big muscle frame. Now she's transitioned and her testosterone level has dropped and her muscle mass has decreased and her strength and uh, stam stamina has decreased. She's now got a little four-cylinder engine, so she's actually at a physical disadvantage. Dr Watson suspects there are other, more sinister factors at play. I'm just wondering whether they did not want to have someone like Hannah representing their new league. Um, they wanted a presentable, beautiful female who could be the face of AFLW. A trans woman may not be what they desired. Okay, I had to actually take notes because there's so much nonsense here that we need to pick apart in that uh, less than two minute clip there. Um, first of all, we'll start with the trans person, the other, the older person, saying that, uh, well, female competitors, they're not complaining. Well, yes, they are complaining, first of all. Uh, they, they have complained in all of these sports. But then the other part of it is that um, it when if and when they do complain, they are shouted down and called bigots by people like you. So you've got a metaphorical gun to their head, and then you're saying, look at that, they're not complaining, while you point the gun right at their head, and you're muttering under your breath to them, you better not complain. You see, they're not complaining. I mean, if they do complain, we'll destroy their lives, of course, and, uh, and we'll just rip them to pieces but they're not complaining. No, it's, it's even in spite of that, there are still women who are, who are speaking out. And many more should and hopefully will in the future. Also, we're told by the, um, the reporter there that Hannah Mouncey has no residual benefits. And again, you have to see the visual to really appreciate this. And, you, and in fact, go, you can go to Google and just look up Hannah Mouncey. And to see the, the spectacle of this guy competing against women in rugby, it's ridiculous. It, it, like you would, you, another thing from the left where when you first see it, you think it must be a joke. This must be from, no, it's, this is real. Hannah Mouncey, in spite of all the, uh, uh, the hormones, presence, and everything else, Hannah Mouncey is six foot two. Hold on, I just had it up here. I want to get, I want to get, Hannah Mouncey's statistics. Okay. Six foot two, 220 pounds. No residual benefits in rugby against women. What's the average um, height and weight of a, of a, of a female? Um, five feet, four inches, and 170 pounds. 
okay? Five feet four on average versus six foot two. 220 pounds versus 170 on average. No residual benefits. It's just, it's just total absurdity. They, they, the, the truth is right there in front of your face, as always. And they are, and you're looking right at it, and they are telling you, no, that doesn't exist. It's like you're, it's like you're, you're standing in front of a brick wall. Okay, and Hannah Malty is basically a brick wall compared to these, uh, to these women that he's competing against. But it's as though you're standing in front of a brick wall and actually banging your head against it. And they're sitting there telling you, oh, that brick wall doesn't exist. No, it doesn't. It's actually not there. And you're supposed to just accept that. Oh, okay. And then the other part of this too, I mean, we could, we could talk about um, just how dishonest and disingenuous all this is. Women aren't complaining. Yeah, but when they do, you destroy them. No residual benefits. That's ridiculous. And we could talk about all those issues. But also, I don't want to gloss over just the, um, how they sort of casually admit the ways that um, this gender, so-called gender transition destroys your body. So you have this other guy just casually admitting this. Oh, well, yeah, he's, he's been on, uh, on all these drugs and everything, so he's a lot weaker. He's, just, he's not as powerful. Well, he's, he's, no, I, I assure you, his body's been destroyed. By, by transition. And that's supposed to be a good thing. Now, I, I agree with that. I don't deny that. They are correct that when you get on the hormone drugs and everything else and you start the transition, you are destroying your body. And you are, de- whether you're a man or a woman, you are depriving yourself of many of the benefits of being a man or a woman. You're taking away a lot of the uh, inherent power that you would have in that identity as a male or a female. You're stripping all of that away, and in return, you're getting nothing. So a woman, as she transitions, uh, she takes away her female form, her breasts, her ability to conceive children, um, all of that, her feminine beauty, all of that is out the window, and in replace, she gets nothing. She doesn't get the power and strength of a man. She doesn't even get the appearance of a man. Um, She doesn't get the biological capacities and abilities of of a male. She gets none of that. So she's lost much of what makes her a woman, though she still is a woman. And she gets none of what makes a man a man, and she just ends up with nothing. So it's a bargain where you give up everything and you get nothing in return. Like a literal deal with the devil is what it is. And it's the same thing for a man. And they admit that like like they're proud of it. Like it's a good thing. No, what, what you're describing, that's all the more reason why this doctor should not be doing this to people. And they get away with that. Like, they can, most of the time they will admit, or rather they will, they will refuse to admit that gender transition destroys the body. The only time they'll admit it is in this context, when they're trying to defend the idea of males competing against females in sports. And then they'll freely admit it and say, oh, no, his body's completely ruined. I assure you, everything's fine. Absolutely grotesque. Well, before you go, uh, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. And while you're at it, if you want to go watch or listen to my full show, head to dailywire.com and subscribe. You can also catch my show on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. So go check it out now. I demand it. Your compliance is somewhat appreciated.